the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two small fish but what are they among so many and jesus said make the man sit down now there was much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand and jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed this to the disciples and the disciples took them down and likewise the fish and as much as they would verse 12 said everybody ate and they were full amen in verse 10 he said let the men so i'll be talking now it, the word is make the men so he has to make them all right but i'll put my own let let the men sit down part one now the place where we read we find that something's wrong this is a crusade that jesus has and in the midst of the crusade there is a need there is no bread to feed the massive crowd that has come for the crusade of jesus christ and jesus turns in the midst of that lack and when they say jesus there is no food when jesus wants to perform a miracle his greatest concern is the men he said let the men sit down so there was something wrong with the men with their position and what they were doing he said let the men sit down so we understand therefore that every intervention of god in the affairs of the earth is a function of the alignment of a man to him when you do not see god show himself it means that a man is not properly the word aligned means on the same pattern pathway with god before God will intervene in the affairs of men, he must bring a man to be aligned to him. There are prayers we pray in families. Listen, over the world, over the nations, over cities and villages and families, until the men are aligned to God, you will not see God act. Because every manifestation of God on the earth realm is governed by principles and laws that involve man's responsibility. So there is no way that God, God will not bypass man to do something on earth. It's not possible. So Jesus looked at it and said, let the men sit down. We are crying today over nations. There are problems in families. But I assure you, if we all go to him, you will reply, let the men sit down. There is something wrong with the men. They have to come to the place where they can be taught. Where they can be mentored. If you read the story of Mark chapter 5. Of the man who was at the, the tomb, the madman. Bible says, no man could tame him. Because no man could tame him, a demon had to tame him. If a man does not willingly submit himself to the authority of God, he will forcefully be submitted to the authority of a demon. There is no two ways. A man is designed to be under the control of a spirit. Whether you like it or not, there is a spirit that controls you at every instant of your life. So Jesus looked and said, let this man sit down. There is nothing I can, the Lord says, there's nothing he can do unless the men sit down. So we are here today for one reason. We have to sit down. Now, I want to show you something briefly tonight. He said, let the men sit down. The issue is this. Jesus was specific in who he wants to sit down. Now, the, before we have to even go ahead, I believe that the greatest reason why there is so much confusion in the world is because man does not know who he is. That's the problem. If you read the Bible, we go back to the beginning. God created everything. The first thing that you need to know is the reason why God created you. A man needs to know who he is and what he is created to do in order to find his place in life. Who are you? The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things he has. 
Do you understand me? So we need to go back to God. Who am I? Who am I made to be? Who am I created to be? Now, if you go back, you see something. So, it is the understanding of the purpose of your creation that gives value to your existence in the sight of God and men. If you don't know who, why you are here, why are you a man? You have to go back and understand why am I here? Life is beyond, you know, in First Corinthians 10 7, it says, They sat down to eat and drink. That's what happened to men who do not know why they were created. They sat down. When you do not know the purpose of your creation, your existence will be factored around the pleasures of the flesh. We live in time where men have been wrongly defined. In our days, people think that, listen to me, they eat, what a corruption. It's so bad that the indice of, of, of checking the strength of a man is sexual power. That is so foolish. They feel like if a man can last long in sex, he's a man. How can you define manhood by bed? The thing if a man can drink alcohol, now man you be. The thing if a man has many women, so the thing, the ability to have many women, many girlfriends, manhood has nothing to do with that at all. So he says, they sat down to eat and drink. That's what happens to men who don't know why they were created. They sat down to eat and drink. They begin to live for the pleasure of the flesh. They live for the things that give pleasure to the flesh. Not knowing that the Bible says in Revelation 4.11, it says God created man for his pleasure. You don't forget that. That you are created to give pleasure to God. Isaiah 3, 7 and 21. He said, I created them for my praise and for my glory. Go back to God. The man who is relevant in the sight of God is the one whose activities bring pleasure to God and his kingdom. We have become, the, the world has changed everything. You see in this world, there is something that Satan is afraid of. Satan is afraid of the man who knows who he is in God. Satan does not fear money. He does not fear property. He fears revelation. Revelation is light. He fears purpose. Satan told, so you look at a hole where people are purposeless, going from left to right. Men are confused. And it is the confusion of men that has led to the arising of the corruption of women. Because men are confused now. Women have stood up to do what they were not called to do. And what they are bringing is corruption. No doubt Jesus said, I am angry with that woman Jezebel. She is teaching my servants. When did a woman began to teach men? What did she teach them? He said, she's teaching my servants immorality and fornication. Revelation 2.20. You see what happens? Because the men did not know who they were. So you have to go back because today there's a great confusion in the world. Because listen to me, Satan is afraid of you. Even though you don't yet know. But Satan does not fear a man who doesn't know who he is. Because, listen, let me something that may look hard. <laughs> Once a man is ignorant of the purpose of his creation, his existence is degraded to that of an animal. That's hard. It means you and an animal, there's no difference. You will live for nothing but the pleasure of the flesh. For what you can, remember, he said they sat down to eat and drink for what he can eat, for what he can drink, for the women he can have. His life will be factored around that. There will be nothing in his life that reveals God to the world. That is a man that does not know who he is. When a man begins to know who he is and who he is in God, I assure you that you look at that man and you see God in him. So we go back. Now the Bible says, God wants to create. You read Genesis chapter 1. When God wants to create the tree, he said, let the earth bring forth. Let the earth bring forth. And trees came from the earth. When God wants to create fish, he said, let the water bring forth. When God wants to create animals, he said, let the earth bring forth. When God wants to create man, he said, let us make man. Listen, in the law of survival, this is the law. The survivor of every creature depends on its abiding in the habitat of his creation which means 
fish is designed to survive and thrive in water take a fish out of water it dies so before god creates any thing he creates the environment where that thing will survive so for fish if fish does not have god there's no trouble because fish needs water not god fish does not need what god to survive fish needs water it came from water fish animals can live without god but when it comes to man man came from god so man cannot exist apart of god now when god wants to make man he goes to the ground and he takes dust and he forms the body but man is not alive ah. but when animals came from the ground they were alive man came from the same ground that gave animals life yet man was not alive why because god wanted it to be known that the life of man does not come from the earth though man is made from the earth but animals are made from the earth and their life is from the earth so god makes man and he forms man from the earth to show something powerful god now breathed into man he said when god breathed into man man became a living being so when a man departs and detaches himself from god what does he become a dead being so your sustenance as a man is a function of your ability to abide in the presence of your god can you follow me here now look at this let me show something earth and man so man is an entity where earth and heaven meets his body is from the earth his spirit is from heaven if a man is focused only on the earth 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 he may have money have things but you'll be spiritually useless and wait if a man is also only focused on spirit 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 on earth he'll be useless and may die early so the sustenance of a man is in his understanding of the operations of the energies of heaven and earth trust me if you are a prayer warrior you pray and fast and you don't eat hunger will kill you because you have broken the law of the earth so even though we focus on our spiritual where we come from we understand that man is heaven and earth in one body do you get what i'm saying so if you say no it's only my god i don't care about money you will soon discover that there is earth that on earth you need money so as a man you pray every day you don't sleep you don't rest you will die it's not god that has killed you it's your misunderstanding of the principles of the earth because every ecosystem every economy has principles by which he operates there are principles in heaven know them know the ones of the earth because man brings that together so in man man is the only creation that is a meeting point of heaven and earth are you with me now so god makes man now god makes man from him first thing god says let us make man in our image so who, are, who is man man is the image of god that's who you are don't derive your identity from the things you have you are not what you have luke 12 15 jesus said the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things he has it's not the money you have it is the image you carry listen to this God makes man so that man can make the earth God only puts a garden the whole earth was still empty man takes his shape in God and the earth takes his shape from man so when you look at your family it is actually reflecting you it is easy to be angry with your wife and children no they are reflecting you now let us genesis 126 let us make man in our image look at that the first thing that god gives man is his image god says i want you to be like me why man has something god does not have it is called flesh god does not have flesh and flesh and blood is the only vehicle that spirits can employ to operate on the earth realm with that listen god is mighty if i leave this place and go up now god cannot come and preach here god can i didn't say we know god cannot he cannot preach anything if god wants to preach he will tell me what to come and preach 
because God needs flesh and blood when it was time for Jesus to come they needed to look for Mary he said please we need your body there is no way nothing can leave heaven and operate on the earth without employing flesh and blood so who are you you are that flesh and blood that God that is, you are the man is the vehicle of God you are that that vehicle that God will employ to invade the earth realm so understand that number one man is made in the image of God so who are you I am the image of God if you read John chapter 1 he said and there was a man called Job he had cattle horses servants then Satan said to God said to Satan have you seen my servant Job there is none like him a man who fears me a man who is righteous a man who fears me a man who is righteous a man who is blameless they sit and say, does God fear you for nothing? Have you not given him houses and, 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 and money? Look at this. When God was describing Job, he never mentioned anything Job had. Because you are not what you have. Your identity is in God. Today, people want to say, why are you a big man? I have money. I'm sorry for you. If you have everything and you don't have God, you have nothing. So, in the eyes of God and immortal beings, man is described and defined by the content of his heart and not his hand. Who are you? Is when your heart bears the image of God. Notice that Bible says in Genesis 5, verse 1, it says, And Adam, verse 1, he said, God made Adam in his image. Verse 2, he said, And Adam bore children in his own image. Look at this. When Adam sinned, he lost the image of God. And whatever Adam created after that carried by his own image. That's what I'm saying. Once you are disconnected from God, everything in your life will prove that you are disconnected from God. Submit to God. Resist the devil. So if the devil is resisting you, it is a testimony that you are not submitting to God. Are you listening to me here? Number two. He said... Let us make man in our image, number one, number two. Let him have dominion. Let him have what? Look at the purpose. Let him have dominion. Let him have dominion over the fish in the sea. The birds in the air. So everything, that, so God now, so God makes man, number one, in his image, number two, to have dominion. So the purpose of God creating man is that man should be the bearer of the image of God and the extension of the dominion of God on earth. That is two things. If you want to judge your life, judge your life by the image you bear and the dominion you exercise. When sickness, poverty, demons begin to have dominion over us, it is a sign that there, there's something with it that is lost. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are taking our place in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your amen is not loud enough. Amen. Let your amen be louder. Amen. But look at this now. So, Satan saw man. So when God creates man, God makes man a prince. He said, the word dominion means be a king. Be a king. Genesis 126. He said, Be a king. Be a king on the earth. Now look at this. To have dominion, therefore, is to exercise kingship. To exercise what? Kingship. Hmm. It means that in the realms of God, Adam, man, had a throne. And man's throne. Was to have authority over everything God created on the earth. The heavens are the Lord, but the earth, Psalms 115, I think verse 16, has He given unto the sons of men. So the earth is man's place of authority. Demons are exercising authority because man lost his place. When God was creating Adam, Satan was there. But Satan was not a threat to God. What does not threaten God should not threaten you. 
But how come today we find something that the devil is everywhere? It's because man lost the place. So when, when Satan come, when Satan came for Adam, he didn't use power, he used sense. Because he knew that his, his aim, if Satan came for a fight, Adam would defeat him hands down. In fact, Satan could not stand before Adam. And if, Satan, if Adam looked at Satan, he would, he, would, he would be destroyed. Because Adam was the image of God. Whatever he looks at, he, his eyes were the windows through which God saw the earth. So, Satan said, now, nah, I cannot fight this man. He's stronger. That's what the strength of Satan is not power, it's wisdom. Wisdom is, wisdom, deception is not power, it's wisdom. It's okay, this man has to lose his crown. So he comes to Adam, he sees him. When Adam sins, Lamentation 5.16 says, we have sinned and our crown has fallen. Our crown. So there was a crown on the heads of man. After the sin, the, the crown fell. So Adam took that crown, put on his head, and Adam became the king of this world. That's why even Jesus called Adam the prince of the world. Why? Because the Adam Adam was the priest. When Adam sinned and lost his crown, Satan took his crown and became the priest of the world. So the earth that Satan is controlling now, it is Adam that committed a high treason and gave it to Satan. Do you understand me? That's what Satan said to Jesus. He said, Jesus, worship me. He said, I will give you all the kingdoms and the glories of the earth for it has been given to me. Sit down. Who gave it to Satan? It's not God because God cannot do business with Satan. But Satan is telling, he said, Jesus, everything on earth, the silver, the gold, all things on earth were given to me. Who gave it to him? And Jesus did not say you are lying. Jesus knew that Satan was speaking true. Why? Because when Adam sinned, everything other Adam came under Satan. But when Jesus now came, he came to bring man back into the place of authority. So the same thing that Satan did to Adam, he wants to do to Jesus. He said, Jesus, bow down, fall down, and worship me. If you read Revelation 4, 10, 11, he said, when the 24 elders fall down to worship God, their crown fall. And the seat of Jesus is called the chair of the king of kings. Adam was the prince of the earth. Satan collected the crown of the prince of the earth. He wanted the crown of the king of kings. So it is your crown that gives you access to your throne. I pray and I prophesy. After this conference, your crown will come back on your head. I say your crown will come back on your head. Amen. I don't know the power that came after your life. There are many families. The crown of the family is on the head of a strong man. But I come in the name of the stronger one, Jesus. I come by the power of the Holy Ghost to take the crown from the head of the serpent. To take the crown from the head of witchcraft. To take the crown from the heads of evil men. I put your crown on your head. I place your crown on your head. Psalms 8 verse 4. He said you have crowned man with glory and honor. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Grace is on your side. If you are shot, yeah. yeah. Somebody shot, yeah. yeah. Shot, yeah. Take your crown. I said, take your crown. 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 I come because I am sent from above. I came as a servant of Yahweh Elohim and his son Jesus Christ to prophesy to your life. I don't know who took your place. After that, take your place back. I said take your place back I said collect your crown I don't know the power controlling your life I break your heart you shall not be subdued you shall not be controlled you will not be oppressed you will not be afflicted lift your hands yeah. yeah. sit down Makata Hasha now look at this. And God said, He said, Adam, where are you? From the time God asked that question, 
it has been God's only question. In the book of Genesis 3, we read, I think, from verse 9. He said, And God asked and said, Adam, where are you? The next thing we see, God comes to Ezekiel. I seek a man to stand the gap. God says to Jeremiah, I'm looking for a man. In the book of John, God, why is God looking for men? It's not because men are absent physically. It's because men are present but not in their place in the spirit. So God is in the temple. Every people are there. Isaiah is there. And God said, Whom shall we send? Ah, God, are you not seeing me? Where are you? That's God's question tonight. Where are you? Where are you? Things are going wrong. Where are you? Things are going out of hand. Where are you? Things are being destroyed in your family. Where are you? There is a question. You say, Adam, where are you? Adam never knew that the price of listening to Satan is that you will lose your crown. You will lose who you are and what you are called to do. When Satan heard God telling Adam that have dominion, Satan was afraid. Satan said it means that God has made Adam the king of Satan. And Satan said I can't be under the authority of this one. Satan was afraid of man. He came after man to take that authority. It's not your money that frightens demons. It's your spiritual authority. Where are you? So there are men who have been deceived and now they are lost in the world, lost in sin, lost in doing things that do not bring God pleasure. And like I can see here, God crying in the realm of the spirit. He said, My son, where are you? Man, where are you? Man, where are you? Women are going astray. Man, where are you? Children are going astray. Man, where are you? Nations have been corrupted. Man, where are you? Political instability. Man, where are you? Trouble left and right. Man, where are you? Famine in the land. Man, where are you? God, the all-knowing God, when he begins to ask a question, please don't answer. Because his question is the answer. If God asks you a question, that question is the answer. Man, where are you? Means man, you are not where you have to be. There was a problem. So you have to ask yourself now, I, am I where I, I ought to be? Am I in the place where I carry the image of God and where I am having dominion? So what does it mean to sit down? Number one, it means to take your place. Bring up Matthew 8 verse 11, NIV version please. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Notice. So to sit down means to take your place. Jesus said, Many will come from the east, and I am I'm among those people. I am among them. Men that will take their place. Now, he cannot ask you to take your place if the place has not been prepared. It means that there were prepared seats that were vacant. Jesus said, come and take your place. There is a place of authority. There is a place of honor. But men are not taking their place. When he said, let the men sit down, number one, it means let the men take their place. You are the head of the house. Not the tail of the house. Take your place. Take your place. Poverty is not an option because poverty will turn you to the wife. I want to stir up anger in you. A man cannot be living in sin because that's an example that is misrepresenting God to your family. He said, Take your place. He said, Men will come from the east and the west and take their place. Listen to me. Listen, can I tell you something? In destiny, your place is prepared, but it is not given, it is taken. All God has done is that he has prepared your place. It is your responsibility to take the place that God has prepared for you. It is your responsibility to say, no, I am the head and not the tail. I am at the top and not the bottom. I am a leader and not the one being led. He said, take your place. You have to have a certain, you have a certain decision tonight. I must rise and take my place. 
who gave the devil right to enter your house and be oppressing people take your place when you find men making excuses these are men who are not taking their place men are not explaining things like women men a man men complain more than women no we don't complain we don't explain we manifest it's time to rise it's time to break out from the captivity of poverty of curse and say no this i want to ask you in mark chapter 5 he said there was a man who lived in his in the tomb was that his place what are you going to do about your life what will you do about your life will you sit down and watch this go wrong i see there's not there's something you can do you can rise and make up your mind you can become resilient in your heart committed and convicted you can tell yourself that enough is enough this attack cannot continue enough is enough this pain cannot continue we need men that will not explain men that will not complain men that will rise and take their place my wife will ask how do you say me too no no you too you don't know as a head you don't know what should be done you know your place take your place as a leader when adam didn't take his place eve taught him how to eat the fruit a man who does not listen to god who soon listen to his wife and it better be for you that your wife is does not listen to satan because she'll pass the information to you I'm asking don't listen to your wife no listen to God first if what your wife say does not agree with what God said what she has said should be rejected I didn't say your wife should be rejected if if you have a woman that you know women like to give advice huh they like to have a say can I pray for you receive the wisdom of God Amen. I saw wisdom moving in the, the spirit now please sit down if your wife wants to say things wants to listen to me no matter what they want to explain hear me very well do not accept any counsel from your wife that does not agree with the instruction that you receive from the spirit of the Lord but now the issue is this if you are not hearing God you are forced to be hearing your wife Adam you have heard God God said don't eat from the tree and this woman is telling you it you're not asking what can, how can you be saying what god said we should not do how do you have friends that ask you to do the very things that god said you should not do so there was a problem there a man has to rise and take his place now when we understand who we are called to be and where we are called to do we can take our place Learn to him if you must take your place you must find your place first if you don't know your place how do you take it give me Luke chapter 4 and verse 20 take from verse 16 from verse 16 first I'll shoot something there so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as it was his custom he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read go ahead read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book what did he do he found the place where it was written. Now go to verse 20 because of time. We know the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Go to verse 20. Then he closed the book and sat down. When did he sit down? When he found the place. You have to find your place. Number one, if you must find your place, you must meditate on scripture daily. Hear me. If you don't travel into the heart of God, you will never discover the purpose for your creation. The purpose for your creation cannot be known in school. It is in God. Only the designer, only the one that designs you can define you. We have to go back to God. We have to go back to God. We have to go back to God. A man must give himself. Open the Bible. Jesus whom we call our Lord, he read the Bible many of us men have despised the bible we think the bible is for women no the bible is for men in case you don't know if a man finds his place his whole family will find their place 
once a father is lost doesn't matter what the wife and children do they are lost if a woman begins to come to church the man may never come but if a man starts coming to church family will follow because family is designed to follow you if a father smoke it is high sure that a son will smoke you don't need to pray for your son not to smoke as you are smoking he will smoke that's just it if your father if your father is a polygamist well you don't have to pray polygamy is already moving around you that's true sit down no matter you want to put it here, our lives reflect our father's own either biological father or spiritual father number one if you must find your place you must meditate joshua chapter 1 verse 8 to 9 god said joshua meditate on the book of the lord daily god called a man if you must find your place number one you must meditate on the book of the law read the bible the bible will tell you that your place is not being under poverty the Bible will tell you that your place is not being under sickness. If you want to find your place, go back to the Bible. Open the Bible. Read it. If Jesus, if Jesus did not read the Bible, he will not find his place. If he does not find his place, he cannot sit down. He sat down when he found the place. He sat down when he found the place. One time you'll be reading the Bible and you'll come across a scripture and you will know that that scripture is talking about you. Go back to the Bible. 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 Let nobody deceive you. Church is not for women. Bible is not for children. It was made for men. It was written by men. For men. He said holy men were carried by God. Even the stories of women. It is men that wrote it for them. I want you to understand if you don't if, if you are not giving to you, see, I, you know there are men that uh, if you don't read the bible you'll be easily deceived by this world because the bible is the only book ordained by god to capture his opinion concerning the affairs of men on earth there is no other book that has god's opinion if you don't read the bible you will never know why you are here reading the bible gives you knowledge at the same time gives you strength go back to the bible now when we teach things like this it looks simple but this is where truth is some people come they want to hear big things let's go back to the bible jesus who is messiah son of god a man he said he went to church as was his custom jesus christ did not miss church service then he read he came to church that he was not the pastor of that synagogue but he asked for the book so he can read when he opened the book he found the place you will not find your place if you don't read the book reason why many of us have not found our place in life we have closed the book of life if you open the book of life you will find your place in life if you find your place you will take your place go back to bible go back to bible men prefer to wake up and read newspaper newspaper men buy newspaper daily because satan has deceived you that when you are current with the news of the earth you are doing well no it is being current with the news of heaven that makes you do well on earth if you read newspaper all you will know is the thing that have happened if you read bible you will know the things that will happen so you have to go back to the bible read it read it read it jesus read john the baptist read they say who are you he quoted Isaiah 35 i am the voice of he and Isaiah 35 and Isaiah 4 i am the voice of he what are you reading listen until you come to the place where you can define your identity by a scripture you have not yet found your open the book when you begin to read bible they'll say who are you you say as they are 41 verse 2 that is who i am you will start quoting scripture you respond Kabadikasa. have you read when satan came after jesus what do you use it is written how do you expect to fight the devil when the devil knows the bible more than you the devil quoted the bible to jesus he said it is written Jesus say it is also written you say one i say two i know we have lost authority we have lost control because we have no connection with the word of god they that know their god shall be strong 
go back to Bible. Many of us despise morning devotion. As you are leaving the house, first thing you buy your newspaper. You buy newspaper. You read newspaper every day. You don't read Bible once. Listen, this is why there is so much poverty, confusion. You see, I, I will tell you, listen, what I'm preaching looks simple. Try it. Go back and start reading Bible. Jesus said, unless you receive the kingdom of God as a child, stop being a man, become a child before God. God is a father. Oh. And when God the father comes, nobody is a father. Everybody is a child. Go back. Open the Bible. Read it. As you are reading the Bible, a revelation will drop. I am the light. You will be surprised. Oh, there are scriptures that can empower you for prosperity. If you read the Bible, you will discover it became poor that I may become rich. You will be surprised how riches will become normal. God is not a magician. God is a miracle worker. Miracle has pattern. Magic has not have pattern. Go back to the Bible. The Bible was not made for pastors. Psalms 1 verse 1 tells us. Let's see that man. Psalms 1 verse 1. Let's see a, a man. And what happened to that man? Blessed is the man who does not. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. What does he do? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Verse 3. What shall he be? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in his season, whose leaf also will not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So, but look at this. How then do you expect to prosper by reading newspaper? But he's telling you that there was a man the man looked at his life he said no i will no longer stand in the walk in the council of the gully council means advice he will not live according to what people say he will live according to what god said he refused listen to me i told you being a man is not drinking beer being a man is having dominion so he went back to the Bible. the man began to read he said the verse next verse whatever prosperity keep listen to me there is a connection between fellowship with god and prosperity in the world i'm telling you no man in perfect fellowship with god is poor poverty is a reality absent in the place of deep fellowship when you are consistent in intimacy with god poverty will disappear from your life poverty cannot be there because god is rich and when you are with him you become who god is if you truly want money go to God don't even pray for money just be reading Bible read Bible pattern your life after the Bible you have read do what the Bible says you'll be shocked the first thing you must do if you must find your place please sit down is to go back to the Bible go back to the word of God read it I want to beg you what I'm saying, I'm not saying don't be current. But before you read a newspaper, read the Bible. Ah, I pray for you. Receive a hunger in your spirit to be committed and connected to the word of God. Amen. Sit down. Hear me. Before you go for newspaper, go for Bible. A day will come in your life. Satan will come against you. It is what you know in the Bible that will save your life and your family. He said, Timothy, give heed to yourself and to your doctrine. In so doing, you will save yourself and those around you. First Timothy 4, 15 to 16. He said, when you are con committed to the word of God, you will save yourself and your family. Being a man means being a protector, being a preserver, being a provider, that nobody dies around you, nobody falls, but the man who is fallen cannot keep people standing. Number two, you must fellowship with the Spirit. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. It is why they were ministering unto the Lord. The Spirit said, 
Now in the church of Ada was at Antioch. There were certain prophets and teachers. Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Tyrene, Manaya who had been brought up with the Herod, the teacher and so. Verse 2. Look at verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Do you know the work to which God has called you? Do you know the work? I pray, I pray. May our eyes be open. Look at that. The Holy Ghost says separate. So get this understanding, therefore. Go back to fellowship. Prayer is not for your wife. In fact, your wife should be sleeping while you are praying. You rise up and lift your hands to God. A man who is not connected to God is an accident waiting to happen. It doesn't matter what you are, and what you will fall, you will fail. You need to go back. Fellowship with the Spirit. Fellowship with the Bible says every night, as it was his custom, Jesus went and prayed. Now, the Jesus that we are following, he prayed. Then how are we not praying? We have to go back. You see, prayer is not for pastors. There's something I want to say that can make you angry. Men should not be asking prayer from pastors. No. We should all be connected to God. And even if we ask for prayer, it should be prayer to support our position. Why the minister to the Lord say pray for me? You will never know why you are here till you minister to the Lord. Your, 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 the identity of your, the, the purpose of your existence is so profound. It cannot be discovered by the flesh, but only through fellowship with the Spirit. You have to go back to God. When things are going wrong in your life, go back to God. Father, what is happening? You didn't come on your own. Listen to me. Let us leave pride and be humble before God. Father, you send me for a reason. A man cannot live his own life borrowing from people. You are also a man. No man is designed by God to be dependent on another man. Another man should be paying your rent. Another man, without you rendering any service to them, no. A man should not be a beggar. That's not what God designed man to live at. A man should not be a slave. He has made man and gave him dominion. But that dominion is when you stay in your position. You will never know your place if you are not relating with God. And things happen in your house you never saw it in a dream something is wrong how does it happen women trust they love men who give to them but they trust men who have vision because they know that with, with you their future is secured a giver secures the present but the visionaire secures the future she knows that this man knows where he's going to he's not confused there must be a sense of direction in your home weekly monthly yearly there must be listen to me a new year will come all of you will gather to hear what i have to say for that year that's what makes you trust me and follow me because you know that with this prophet you are not confused if you want direction for this nation now i will give it to you because I'm a watchman. I don't have to guess. I know what God is saying now for this nation now. I know what will happen in the next seven years in this nation. I know it because I've started. That is my own place of authority. You have your own. Your family is your first place of authority. It's your territory where you have dominion. You have to exercise there. But you have to go to God. Friend, if you read the Bible, the Bible only began speaking about Abraham when Abraham was 75 years everything that abraham did before 75 was not recorded you know why once a man has not encountered god the activities of his life are not what to be recorded in heaven they don't know him they don't know him we don't know what happened to his life to 75 years when abraham meets god you know what god does god changes his name from abraham to abraham there was a young man called Jacob when he met God after after about 60 years of walking on earth because your name is Israel your life begins when you meet God 
some of you are here there, are, there is the wealth of nations in you but you are begging and borrowing because you have not when you meet God you know yourself because he, he said in him we live our life is hidden in God meaning if we don't enter God we cannot have our life so they had to move in him there are some of you here there are companies in you you don't know God there are companies at 75 Abraham was a failure living in his father's house a 75 years old man in the father's house being a beggar stranded no child but when God met him Abraham became the father of faith how do you start from a man who is childless to become a father of faith is by encounters encounters are the system through which God brings men into the knowledge and the experience for his will for them meet God meet God meet God some of you are here you have to be minister in the nation directors in banks but you are lost Satan has covered your eye with a veil you don't know you are lost you are lost even you you know that you are called unto greatness you don't know what it is you know that your life is more than what you see now but there are some people you feel suffocated and sometimes when we feel like this we begin to put the anger on our family you are angry with your wife it's not your wife greatness is calling you but, but you are I I pray may our eyes be open to meet our God Amen. sit down friend some of you know you see some of your friends you know that in your in the in the ranking of God you are more than them you don't understand why your business is one million you 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 know that there's something about you you are but you don't understand how you are restricted to 50,000 that restriction is the embargo placed by your ignorance of who you are ignorance will limit you you know you know listen to me even when I was in the web I knew that there was something special about me I didn't know the thing even when I was actively in sin actively sinning against God sometimes I'll do some things but I always knew that there's, there's something in me but the day I encountered him he said you are my prophet it is an encounter that ushers man into the knowledge and the experience of God's purpose for him you have to meet God you have to meet God you have to meet God did Abraham know that he will be the richest man of his days this man was living in his father at 75 in his father's house when he met God you see Abraham was rich in everything there was none richer than Abraham in his days look at a man whose life began in poverty ended in glory because at some point of his life he met his God Saul is persecuting the church at the end of his life he becomes the greatest apostle because on the way of Damascus there is an encounter oh, the way of Damascus the way of Damascus is a place of encounter where a man meets his God and there is a turn around in direction it's so painful you come to church you see more women than men where, where are the men where are they you go to bars you see more men than women what are they doing there what are they doing there what he said let the streets be empty compare them that my house said the lord may be full we are called to build nations we are listen we are called to build nations own banks that give loans to countries here we are restricted with cocoa farms thinking that we are doing good not knowing that you are living one percent of your life because you have not met god you have to meet him your life your life gets a meaning by encounter he he thought his name was jacob he married and told his wife my name is jacob he gave birth to 12 children told them my name is jacob and god says a lie your name is israel after 60 years Moses was 80 when he met God. God said, what are you doing in the bush? He said, Lord, I'm a, I'm a shepherd. God said, ah, leave this place. He said, no, you are a prophet. Moses said, me? He said, you. Moses said, no, I, 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 I'm a stammer. I cannot talk. God said, shut up. You are a prophet. And that man became the greatest prophet. But at 80 years, Moses was so poor, he was living in the house of his father-in-law. <laughs> 
What? Listen, when you don't know your purpose, you become a caricature in destiny. This is a the, the, a the man that has is destined to be one of the greatest prophets to live. Is in the house of his father in law, perching in one room. And in order to repay his father in law, he began to carry his father in law sheep for free. For 40 years, he was carrying goats. A man called to carry nations was leading goats. I am not called to lead animals, I am called to lead nations. You are called to lead nations. Listen, see that in Mark chapter 5, he said, The madman, eh? He said, He was at the tomb crying to what? To graveyards and dead bodies. When he met Jesus, he said, He went to the Decapolis and cried to men. I said, Well, you don't know who you are. You'll be a caricature in destiny. A man that was called to speak to nations, to 10 nations, was speaking to 10 graveyards. Where? Oh, your Katsuke Palika Tabanaka. Open my eye. There must be an encounter. Some of you, you know. Whenever you go to Boro, you are not happy because you know that Boro is not for you. You know that uh, Lakiba. You know that you are more than that. Why do you know that you are more than that, but you don't get there? Then, then, then what you need to activate is not altar. It's not Satan. It's to meet your God. Some of you, you know. You are aware. You go to the house where you stay. You know that you should not believe in this kind of house. You know. I mean, it, listen to me. Eh? When his Bible says, God has laid eternity in the hearts of men. Even when you are unbelievers, you can't, your destiny is calling for you. When you see people doing policy, you know that you are called to be the mayor of Kumba. You know. Yet you are driving Okada. When you look at governors, you say, there's something in me that I have to be a leader of my people. But yet you are the one collecting money in a, in a village Jangi. I'm not saying that job is bad. But if it's not for you, it's not for you. You can feel the greatness. The man cried day and night because he knew I'm called to something more than Jesus met him. One encounter. The man preached to ten cities. Will you encounter your God? Will you open your heart and meet your God? There is an encounter that turns your life around he said you are not jacob you are israel you are not abraham you are abraham you are not simon you are peter when a man encounters god he said peter he said no i'm Simon." he said you are not simon jesus met him jesus called him simon but the day that he said jesus you are the son of god so you can be coming to church god will not reveal you to you until you know him first Simon was following Jesus. Jesus called him Simon. But the day he turned and said, You are the Christ. He said, Ah, you are Peter. Lord, who am I? Some of you, say your truth. When you go to drink, you don't feel happy. You feel like this is not your life. So you, as I'm speaking now, we want to go to a bank to take loan. You feel like this is not what you should be doing. I say, eh, you know that greatness is calling, but you don't know where it's calling from. You, you know that I am more than this. You, you are aware. Can I tell you something? That restlessness you are feeling is the cry of your heart to meet your God. That, that dissatisfaction, that anger, why you, you know why you're not happy? Because you have not met him. You know you're not in that place. I should not be begging now. I should not be borrowing. I should be the one lending to nations. But until you meet God, rise on your feet.